Hello and welcome to everyone who is watching the Written and Melanin channel, wherever this day may have found you. I'm so glad that you are here. My name is CM Lockhart, better known as Chelsea, and I'm here with LaCase Marie Cousineau and also Christina Forrest. And we are here to have a book discussion with the author of, of I Want to Be Where You Are and Now That I Found You. Both of these books are amazing. And if you haven't seen us talk to Christina before, she has been on the channel. We interviewed her and you should go watch that. So I will leave a link down in the description so that you can do that because you're an awesome person and you want to support. And if you're watching us and you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that and enjoy this conversation. Yeah. Spoiler warning. We have read both I Want to Be Where You Are and Now That I Found You. So if you have been warned, this discussion will have spoilers. So proceed at your own risk. Okay? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Christina, first of all, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for coming back to yeah. talk to us. Thank and you for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So let's let's just like get into this, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so for the people watching this, I'm assuming that you have read the book. That's the premise that I'm going to function under. But in case you are a bold person and you haven't, I Want to Be Where You Are is the story of Chloe and Eli. They go on a road trip together so that Chloe can audition for the dance school that she really wants to get into. And Eli can work out a couple of things with his dad and his family and his future. And now that I found you, it's the story of Evie and Milo, who I absolutely, absolutely love. Yes. And it's, <laughs> it's about Evie finding her grandmother so that she can get her to go to this award ceremony so that she can present her with the Lifetime Achievement Award. But grandma is missing and now we have to find her. That's the premise of both those Ooh. books. And I loved it. I love both of them. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, like I said, me and the case, we were on the call earlier and we were just literally just talking about, oh my God, I love her book so much. Did you yeah. Really I'm so glad so. to hear that. Yeah, yeah, we really, we really love them. Um, I just love, oh, sorry, Chelsea. I jumped down. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, you know how I get, so I'm just over here like, <laughs> dumb. <That's> so <laughs> funny. <laughs> but, um, I realize that we actually haven't said words, so we should probably do that. <laughs> okay, um, do you want to go first, the case, or you want me to go first? Oh, go ahead. You go ahead. I'll jump in. Okay. So, first of all, I feel like it's so important for us to talk about Milo, and now that I found oh. you. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He is my absolute favorite. I love him. Mm -hmm. I love Eli, too, but I love Milo. And yeah. <laughs> That's we fair. All right, so like, where where did you get the inspiration from? Like, can we just talk about that? Like, how did Milo and Evie and them come to be? Like, <sighs> okay, like the characters, yes. like their personalities, etc. Okay, and so their love or their romance, all the good fuzzy stuff that you nailed. So <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Um, so when I started this book, all I knew. At least I, I always try to start each of my books with um, the romance with the main character and whoever his or her love interest will be because the the romance is like the uh, main thread for me even though sometimes it's it kind of can seem like a subplot it's what grounds me in the story and when I'm thinking about like outlining part one part two part whatever like the climax always has something to do with the relationship and the outline has to do with the progression of the relationship. So that's where I start. I always need to know who they are, what they like and dislike, uh, how they relate to each other. And once I have that nailed down, the, the plot sort of, I some, sometimes have the plot, at least plot ideas first, but then the plot sort of solidifies after I know these characters and how it is that they are going to love each other. Um, and so when I started, now that I found you, my first uh, order of business was to make sure that Evie was nothing like Chloe and to make sure oh, that yeah. Milo was nothing like Eli. And so I was like, okay, Chloe is like this soft, sweet uh, girl who, who trusts people. She just has this very big heart and she's so mm -hmm. full of hope. And, you know, she sort of walks around with like, you know, just flowers in her yeah. eyes. Like she sees everything. <laughs> yeah. She's a little apprehensive, but she sure. is 
a pretty optimistic person. And I was like, well, who is the opposite of Chloe? And I was like, well, this girl, whoever she is, has to be pessimistic and she has to be jaded. And I want her to be uh, like, like a prickly pear. Like I want her to not trust <laughs> you unless you give her a reason to trust you. Um, and I didn't want her to be the everyday girl. I had a lot of fun writing Chloe. Um, and just like, I wanted her to be someone that everyone can relate to regardless of their background. Um, but you know, I also really love stories about people who are just sort of like untouchable in a way. Like you would like, you would never live their life, but you mm -hmm. sort of, after you get to know them, you're like, oh, well, they're not so much different than I am. Um, mm -hmm. and so then I came up with Evie and she's famous and she's just like got this huge chip on her shoulder. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, well, who is the perfect person to date Evie and who yet who is very different from Eli? And I was like, well, Milo has to be nice. <laughs> 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 Eli, <laughs> Eli bless his heart. I love him so much, but he, he is a little hard. He's, he's, I purposely made him uh, a little hard to know. He has yeah. a lot of things that he just does not want to tell people. And, you know, with the exception of the one thing that Milo is not telling her, he's very forthcoming in all of his interactions with Evie. Like he just sort of is just like has his heart on his sleeve and he's like, yeah. you know, this is the way I live my life and that's cool. And yeah. he doesn't get Evie's like whole persona. And he's like, I don't understand. He just kind of doesn't get why she is the way that she is. Um, Especially because he's like so chill. Like he's just yeah, like a he kid is. living in this like crowded apartment with his friends. Like, you know, they're just like sort of riding the wave of living each day as it comes. Um, I really love that and you said that. Cause like, I absolutely loved that part where she's like, why are these four dudes all living in this one bedroom apartment? But it's like, <laughs> it works because it's just like, yeah, there's works. two of us here and there's one on the couch and then this guy doesn't really live with us except when he wants to. And yeah. To, yeah. yeah they're, they're, they just don't think anything else of it. They're just like, yep, we live here mm -hmm. and we're in a band and you know, life's cool. And you know, they just have this very um, laid back approach as so different from Evie, who is like yeah. had had a plan since she was like out of the womb to be mm. this star. Okay. Um, and uh, Evie, they were both hard to write in different ways. I think number mm. one is just like overall the second book syndrome is mm. a thing in of itself. But Evie is so so guarded and she has she's like very sad you know she's so mm -hmm. sad and she's trying to cover it up and she's kind of a spaz and she just is like constantly dealing with all of these like negative feelings and that was hard for me to write at first yeah. because I like, kept wanting to try to make her Happy. happier Happy. well I, mean, I love that you put in that betrayal that first betrayal like the bit, first big one with Simone yeah um, because I think First of all, Chelsea and I talked about like, oh my God, yeah, we all have this moment with a friend, <laughs> yeah, yeah. whether we like it or not, unfortunately. And what I loved as a reader was seeing the way when Evie was forced to confront that, all the other little betrayals she maybe had pushed to the background, like her parents being away, yeah. her grandmother leaving Los Angeles, then her grandmother disappearing, like she had to kind of process everything instead of burying it but beneath the whole like oh my life is ruined like that was taking precedent under really understanding like well why do these other things hurt so bad so I mm -hmm. love that you use that like as a jumping off point for her to like really get her life together I think it's so cool for young people to see that sometimes painful things like that can be just the door you need to walk through so that you can get to that next level yeah, yeah definitely um and, then and so so Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no. I didn't mean to talk over you. I was going to say that. And it's not the end of the world. Like, everything yeah. feels so vague when you're, you know, fresh out of high school and you're trying to figure out what your life is going to be. And you have this plan and the plan doesn't go the way the plan yeah. was supposed to go. And you think everything is over. But then you see that it's like, it's not over. It's just the start of a different beginning than the story you thought yeah. it was going to be. And yeah. I love that. Yeah, I, I like to write stories where it's what what's happening feels like the end of the world to the character, but it's actually yes. not the end of the world, which is like 
basically how you do high stakes in contemporary novels <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, you know contemporary romance um mm -hmm. and so milo was also difficult to write because his personality is that he's nice and oh, so God. that sounds like very silly to say but he is just a nice person and I have mm -hmm. kept you know just various drafts I was like oh one of my main things was like Milo is so flat he's so flat like how can I mm -hmm. liven him up what can I do and you know over the course of various drafts I added different aspects of his personality like his thing with you know leaving the church music oh, yeah. and you know focusing on whatever weird mashup genre band they are. And <laughs> I love that. I love the image of his parents with his mom clutching her purse at the concert. That just like, <laughs> was so cute. <laughs> yeah. And so he, but you know, he, when I read over this book, and when I have, obviously I'm the closest to Evie because I was in her head the whole time, mm -hmm. but Milo is my favorite character he's because sweetheart. he's so sweet. He's a sweetheart. I love that you wrote a dark skin. Like Chelsea and I talked about this. Like he's he's darker skinned. He's like attractive but doesn't know it. He's just kind. <laughs> he's shy. Those are like things we don't really like. Black characters don't really get to be a lot, especially mm -hmm. for a guy. So I just was like, oh, my cold dead heart. Like. <laughs> Like, this really sweet boy who just met this old lady and he obviously he knows who she is but and they're also, bffs like, at the end of the day she's just this old lady who he delivers groceries for and she's just really cool and he, she seemed like she needs to talk to somebody so he keeps showing up and i love yeah. that was part of his character because he does that for esther and ruby too like evelyn yeah, is yeah. like a one-off like, he's just a really nice kid and yeah. he comes from such a good place and he's so wholesome and it's just like even yeah. the one lie that he tells you're just kind of like okay but like like, but was it a lie? Was it? It's not that big of a deal, Evie. Come on. Yeah, yeah. like Evie, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I love Milo so 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 much, especially how yeah. he's just like casually okay with like, oh, you've got friend issues. Like, what's up with that? And then he just runs with it. Like he doesn't push the issue. He just hangs out with her. Yeah. He's like, so you're gonna do this thing, and then my favorite, one of my favorite scenes. I'm gonna say my favorite favorite. But like one of my favorites is when he shows up. She's like, it's a black tie event. And he shows up in a brown suit. Oh, and she's dude. just like, I know. what the world? <laughs> <laughs> what was the suggestion? I love that. She's like, you've got to change. He's like, oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, genuinely like, what do you mean? And I, for he's a like, minute, I thought I looked nice. <laughs> and for a minute, I was like, when he's like, yeah, I got a tux. I was like, really? Really? I'm like, when he does hang out with Evelyn Conaway, maybe he has a tux. Maybe she That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. Who knows? But then, no, he just doesn't know what a tux is. And he, he shows up in a Easter suit. suit. <laughs> yeah. I just, I kind of imagine it was something that he like wore to his high school graduation. Like, yes. and has never bought another suit since then. So. Oh, that's so spot on. <laughs> I love it. I, like perfect. Chelsea mentioned the, all the guys living together in that apartment. I have known guys in bands and that is so spot on. It's like a mattress on the floor with like maybe a top sheet. There's like pizza <laughs> boxes everywhere and they're all crammed in there living their best life, constantly making music. That's what I loved about this. Like. I, I felt like I was there. Like, oh my gosh, this was my 19 year old case experience. This is like, not, I wasn't a movie star. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, just like tr figuring out how to trust people. And mm -hmm. I, it was just, it was such a fun read. I, I was, I was very, very happy the whole time. I'm like, I was rooting for Evie. It feels good to root for a girl who's not perfect, who's yeah. not all the way terrible. She's just a mm. regular girl in extraordinary circumstances um so, can we so yeah I, I pictured like tessa thompson i don't know who you pictured like i saw I you pictured, but also tessa i pictured um oh my god what's her name from vampire diaries who played the Kat witch Graham? yes that's why i pictured. oh i can like see younger. that <laughs> okay i can definitely see that too nice okay yeah so i'll see I still see Tessa Thompson because that's what the kids uh, told me in the middle of. But that works too. I'm just like too. I can't even see it now. They both <laughs> work. <laughs> well, just because to me Tessa Thompson is like the epitome of cool. And like when when you said like um oh, what was she wearing? 
whatever outfit she wore to the announcement of uh with paul christopher i was like oh, right, oh, yeah, yeah. That, i'm like that sounds like my girl tessa. like i know tessa thompson like oh yeah that's totally <laughs> <Tessa>. <laughs> but can we yeah. talk about one of the things that i really really loved about evie like i love how at the beginning she like is one of those characters where she acknowledges her hurt and her pain and she she's not yes. like trying to figure out what her problem is she's trying to figure out how to get past her problem yeah and- I really love that she recognizes that she's lonely and she doesn't trust people. It's not like, oh my God, why do I have so many problems? It's like, no, 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 this is the problem. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do with it because, okay, and I also want to talk about Simone because I feel like, first of all, I want to give you kudos because I really like Simone as a character because- Oh, oh you did? God. I wanted to choke her. <laughs> first of all, <laughs> <both reactions>. she, <laughs> she's horrible. Like, I, 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 I remember yeah. reading what she did to betray uh, Evie, and I remember mm. texting the case, and I was like, yo, I want to punch her in the face and drag her for Evie. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. visceral reactions to that. Um, yeah. My friend Ashley Woodfolk, who blurred the books, I sent the, the manuscript to her, like, forever ago and she just texted me in all caps like that bitch and I was like oh god <laughs> what have I done did I do something to her and I was like um it's just like I'm talking about Simone and I was like oh okay yeah. and like yeah. other like my critique partners and everything whenever they get to that scene when you find out that Eve's been oh. fired because of Simone everyone's like mm. what like if people have such strong reactions to that yeah. which is so funny yeah. to me because when I'm thinking about when I was writing the book, mm-hmm. my biggest like, oh my God, things is the thing with Milo. And, oh. um, and when she finds her grandmother, those were like, yeah. the big, oh my God, things like for yeah. Simone. And maybe it's because I was like, okay, this is my jumping off point. It was mostly like, I'm writing up to this yeah. moment. And then I'm, yeah. that's where the story's starting. Um, and I always knew it was going, I don't know. I just, yeah. I just, when I was writing it, it wasn't very, I always knew Simone was going to be the bad guy. So I was never yeah. surprised by what she did, but I've just been so tickled when people are like, <laughs> in her. I'm like you, know, you love our pain. <laughs> I oh, I wanted this. to. I, I, I saw it coming. Cause I'm like, Ooh, well, you have that one friend who says she's jealous of you. Yeah. And then she offers to drink. That's probably uh, not a good combination. But I was yeah. just like, I hate her because she, like what she did was wrong on so many levels yeah. and it can't be undone. But I also like that towards the end, she had that moment where she was like, it's not that we weren't friends. It's just that I got to a point where I had to choose me or you and mm. I chose me and I don't yeah. regret it. I would have done it again. That doesn't mean I don't like you. Doesn't mean I don't respect you. However, Oof. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Like I don't regret what I did. She mm. loves her and then she leaves. And I feel like in so many ways that just grasps how like, competitive and catty women can be but also mm-hmm. in the same sense it's like I still don't want to see you fail but like I want to see me succeed more than I want you to succeed Gosh. And, yeah. like, and it's so easy to forget sometimes that they're high schoolers and they've been in competition their entire their whole career, career. Yeah. and they're yeah. the two black girls like literally so it's like yeah. not, even, not only they're in competition with everybody yeah. else they're in competition specifically with oh, totally. each other and from yeah. Simone's point of view she's like She's she's Evelyn Jones. She's like her grandmother is I mean not Evelyn Jones. She's Evie Jones. Her mother is grandmother is Evelyn Conaway. Her parents are famous. Like what does that mean fair? How am I supposed to compete with that? So it's like if I have a chance to bring you down to my level, I'm going to do it because when people are looking at us for talent, you know, from her perspective, she's like, oh, I'm better than you, but you have clout behind your name that you didn't yeah. have. Yeah. So I can yeah. I just really loved her character and her arc. And even though I still want to drag yeah. her, and if I read the book, I'm still going to want to drag her. <laughs> I, hear, I hear what you guys are saying. Yeah, I hear what you guys are saying, but I still would. I was like, hit her! <laughs> I wanted Evie to tell her off in that bathroom. I wanted to her to collect herself like, real quick. Like, Mm-mm, not gonna cry in front of you. And to just like, when Milo showed up, the fact that Evie is still very honest though, is she still yeah. told Simone like, yeah, no, this isn't my boyfriend. I'm not dating him. Even though obviously she knows who he is. He's got a little bit of clout mm-hmm. himself. And let's be real, he's he's cute. He's, he's sexy. Yeah. He's so cute. Like, yeah, he's here with me. What about it? <laughs> yeah. Gosh. I- I'm yelling. I'm calm down. I'm sorry. No, no. I, I, I love that. I love all of this energy. I, well, it was important for me to, I, I never wanted Simone to be likable. 
but I wanted people to understand her. Sure. And so I'm really glad that you were able to understand her motivations and she recognizes that what she did was wrong, but she wouldn't take it back. Yeah. Um, and I never wanted them to be friends again. I think it's important. Uh, it was important for Evie to recognize mm -hmm. that this relationship is not one that needs to continue, um, but that it doesn't have to mean that that doesn't have to be true for all of her relationships. Yes. Yeah. Which is why she ends up forgiving Milo because obviously, and also what he did was like not as bad, <laughs> but yeah. they are, they, they mirror each other. Sure. And yeah. still that, you know, I wanted her to be able to have the maturity to say like, I forgive Simone, but I don't think we'll ever be friends again. Yeah, um, that was a good moment. And I feel like that's so important because again, mm -hmm. like, in high school, I just remember thinking that, oh my God, if I don't have this friend, then like, that's oh the God, yeah. Everything. And it's like, no, life goes on and it's okay to forgive someone for hurting you, but it's mm -hmm. also very okay and actually very healthy to be like, even though I forgive you and I'm not angry with you anymore and I don't want to see you fail or negative things to happen to you, I don't have any interest in rekindling this relationship yeah. and going back yeah. to how things used to be. And that's why I'm really glad when Evie said, I wish you, like, she was basically like, I wish you all the success that you deserve. And yeah. it wasn't like mm -hmm. a, oh, you gonna get yours, you gonna get what you deserve. She was just like, you know what, <laughs> I, I hope you get what you're looking for. What you, you want, know? yeah. It's just, I'm not gonna like, be there, like, I'm not on your, not necessarily on your team, it's just like, I'm that bystander now, I'm at a new yeah. place. Which I think, I think is it's really a great. cool and healthy. Yeah. For sure, I also, and I think it's, oh, sorry guys, no, go no, ahead, Christina. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry, I was just gonna say, um, I think it, is also really important to and i'm glad you did this to show that in a lot of ways we as black women we have to compete with each other all the time like mm -hmm. there can only be one or you're compared like i've had that happen where it's like we might have nothing in common but because we're the only two black girls like we're compared and mm -hmm. contrasted and, and like i see that also in publishing um mm -hmm. you know like there can only there's only a couple slots i think we talked about this last time you were on mm -hmm. but i'm really mm -hmm. glad you showed that and it's it's even i think from my understanding, even more difficult. Like when you get into the like the world of acting, it's like, you know, there's like a Lupita Nyong'o and then there's like, like we said, Tessa Thompson, or you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. yeah, there, there can't be, but there can be like seven Chris's. <laughs> so, yeah, literally. Exactly, right? <laughs> literally. Uh, my favorite Chris, by the way, is Pine. But um, <laughs> like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I'm supposed to say my favorite Chris is my dad, but he's not here, Aww. so. <laughs> um, he gets mad, but, um, yeah, I'm really glad you showed that because it, it is like a fact of life, unfortunately, um, for women that we're constantly like put into, you know, we're forced to like lock horns yeah. for better or worse. And I also don't think that Evie ha would have it in her to say to Simone, like, karma's gonna get you you know like she i don't i don't yeah think, she still love her person. so much because she is simone was all she had for so long yes, yes. and so she still really loves her but she's kind of just like come to terms with the fact that they're no longer going to be in each other's lives yeah. so i think that she even though the relationship was severed in a way like so abruptly and in a way that was very hurtful mm -hmm. and that she never saw coming mm -hmm. she i don't think she would be vindictive toward her because she still really loves her and genuinely yeah. does want to see her do well um yeah and i love that you put that yeah. in there at the beginning too because she was like when it's your turn i'll be there i'll be right there for you like, oh, and yeah. I feel like she meant that. Like, it's not she that I want to see you fail. Like, I really want to see you succeed. And when you get your moment, I will. I don't know. Like, you have those people who, and I say this to the case all the time. You have those people who want to step on you to get to the next place, and then you have those people yeah. who want to bring you to where they are going. And I feel yeah. like Evie was that person where, like, if she got in those doors, she would have happily turned around and pulled Simone through the door with her. Whereas Simone Absolutely. only saw it as, this is a ladder. If I want to get to the next place, then I've got to step on you to get there. Mm, and those are yeah. two very different mindsets, but I feel like you captured it perfectly. And yeah. yeah. I really love that even though that happened, it didn't turn Evie into a a vindictive person because mm -hmm. you know you mentioned several times that Gigi she she can hold a grudge. Oh, I love yeah. Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
she could have e- easily have done that or just like straight up disappeared like her grandmother has done because that's like her very guiding role model for most of the book it's just like yeah. who is Gigi who is Evelyn Conaway who is my grandmother like I want to be like her since everyone's always comparing me and ooh grandma yeah. got issues so yes she does <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. We should get into Gigi. Who ins- did you have anyone who inspired? Like I-, I saw in the afterwards you named her after your own grandmother. But was there any like um, inspirational pieces to to Gigi, or uh, did that just come? So, uh, and she is like Gigi. Gigi. Oh my gosh. She's so much. She's still Gigi. <laughs> I love how extra she is. Yes. <laughs> She's. So she's so over the top. She's like she's like the per she's like the grandmother I want to be because she's mm. so and so, so she is definitely besides from the fact that she's like a huge star. So mm-hmm. I will say that first when I was thinking about status um and and how the world viewed her, yeah. I was definitely picturing like Diane Carroll or like yes. Diana Ross. Yes. Diana Ross is who I had. <laughs> Or Viola Davis. Actually, Zion like, Carroll. You know, like you have those moms, those TV moms, and they're just, you're just like, yep, that's it. They've been mm-hmm. around forever, and they're powerhouses. Yeah. And you just yeah. don't have to mess with them. Like if they walk into a room, you're like, oh my god, she's in the same room as, as me, breathing yeah. my hair. What is happening? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or even like um, this Dorothy Dandridge would have been before her time, but someone oh, like yeah. that who's like so beautiful, Glamour. and cla- glamorous, and classy, mm-hmm. and like she just has this way about her that it's just like, have you guys ever seen the movie Eve's Bayou? Oh, girl, yes. <laughs> so, so Eve's mother and her... Oh, Lynn uh, Whitfield. Lynn Whitfield, yeah. yes. Lynn, also Lynn Whitfield. But the way that they are these black women who are just so glamorous and the way that they walk and talk yeah. to each other is just like, yeah. they're just a, a completely different standard. And so mm-hmm. that's who Gigi is. That's who okay. Gigi became. I see that. When she was younger, she just was pretty and she was talented and she knew she wanted more. She didn't know what that was until yeah. she met her husband or the person who would be her husband eventually. Um, but both of my grandmothers in certain ways did um, – did influence her personality. My dad's mother is like the most stylish person I have ever mm. known. At my book launch for I Want to Be Where You Are, she came in like this like white suit. Like yes, <laughs> and I people, love it. Friends, people would not stop talking to me about her. They're like, your grandmother is so stylish. Like they were like oh. just obsessed with her, and so she has been like a personal style icon to me. Um, and my other grandmother is also very beautiful and glamorous like she has these pictures in her room when she was like 24 i guess and her hair is just like curled she's got some like red lipstick she's always been very beautiful and but she's also very wise and yeah has a very big heart and so then the, in, the, in the heart-to-heart moments that evie and uh gigi have together where uh gigi is like giving her wisdom those were mm-hmm. definitely based on conversations that i've had with my mom's mom who like okay. helped raise me um, so, so those were the bits that, uh, inspired her. The rest is totally fabricated. I love it. <laughs> she, she just like, she, cause in a way she's a recluse, but she's not like a hoarder or like, you know, yeah. she's just, she's in her house. But her house is fabulous. Like, <laughs> you know, <A> dream. <laughs> happy to be inside of her house as opposed to out there with everyone else because her house is better than anywhere else. So, uh-huh. That is the goal. That yeah, is right. my personal goal. It's like, I'm not afraid and, to leave. It's just like, why would I want to? Yeah. yeah. And so, and I, she's just, she, she was just, I don't know. She's just so many things. And I, um, but I also really, really enjoyed writing James Jenkins because he is oh, a yes. he's a trip. Like every time I wrote him oh. into a scene, I was like, "This guy is out of control. Like he's nuts. He's like a Sydney Poitier meets like I don't know who. Like Samuel Jackson is on a plane. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Um, when I was writing him, I was definitely thinking of Sidney Poitier or um, Harry Belafonte. Yes, girl. Sorry, I keep yes girl in you. <laughs> <laughs> That's I love Hollywood. That. Like these yeah. like old classic figures who are just yeah. like so handsome and like le these leading men. And um, I want, but relationship wise between Gigi and James Jenkins, I was thinking about Liz Taylor and um, Richard Burton. Oh. Yeah, they were married like half the time. <laughs> yes, they got married so many times. They were like, everyone knew they were together. They were co-stars. It was just like so much yeah. drama. And that's who I sort of based their like on and off again relationship on. Um, <laughs> so they're just out of control. They are so they nuts. I love, I love every minute of it. I love the I scene know. where like Evie finds them in the brownstone and they're just like casually arguing. Like he's like, you tell me you don't love me and I'll leave right now. He's just like, you know I love you, you fool. And then they make out. Oh. Evie is just like, what is happening? She's right like, now? are you kidding like, me? I'm so confused. Like, you've been just avoiding me so the whole of your career with him. What? Right. Explanation, please. And then he's, and, and Gigi's like, oh my goodness. Like, she's like definitely caught red handed. And it's also like, but wait, there's more to the story. And James is just like, sorry. <laughs> what you want me to say? I oh. think she's here. Like, I didn't know it was a secret, you know? Like, I didn't he's. Know. Yeah. I love that he's, he's just walking around like, I still got the juice. What? Absolutely. He never lost it. He never like, lost at it. that premiere party, and he's there. She's like, what seven year old men are at the club? <laughs> and of course, he's here, you know, like he's just such a character. And I had a lot of fun imagining him in these different places. And like, he's mm -hmm. just so smooth. And he's just like, you know, he's a very, very cool guy. He is so cool. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, thankfully, this is spoiler discussion, but finding out what he did to betray Gigi, I, I'm so glad that it was that. It, I, I, I was thinking, well, did he cheat? No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did he, like, I didn't really think, like, abuse, but I was like, what did he do? And find out that it was something like that, like, that creative mm -hmm. piece, like, that kind of betrayal, I love that it was that kind of betrayal because I think Evie could understand. Well, I, I don't know, it just, it, it tied in really well with everything that Evie yes. was going through. So, mm -hmm. um, what, how did you decide to make it make that the betrayal? That was actually something that I came up with with my, with my editor originally. Okay. Um, originally, it was that Gigi does help; they get back together okay. later in life, and Gigi helps him overcome like his drug addiction and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And she has long been like, you know, after she has. Evie's mother she's basically like I don't want anything else to do I just want to raise a family like I've done the things yeah. that I wanted to do like I'm really chill on that and then her husband dies um mm -hmm. Freddie and yeah. she's kind of just like he was the one person who um sort of guided her through her career and um she really trusted him like trust is such a huge theme throughout the book and she yeah. trusted him and when he died she sort of felt like she didn't want anything to do with the industry but you know she and james got back together and originally it was that they were supposed to move to new york together and have this very chill life mm -hmm. but he went behind her back and decided to go off and restart his career. And she was really hurt oh, by that decision because okay. okay. he didn't involve her at all. Yeah. And unbeknownst to this committee, they ask her to present this award and she just like gets up there and she's like, you asshole. You know, so <laughs> the, the, the overall uh, general arc of their breakup is emotionally still the same, but it was my editor's idea to be like, well, what if yeah. it's something to do with this movie? And I was like, you know yeah. what, that makes a lot of sense. And it ties, ties more. more. Yes, because then Evie is supposed to be doing the remake. And so, and that yeah. that's why she wouldn't want to talk to him, too. Other than yeah. Yeah. Him that does. It's like, no, 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 no. It wasn't that you just wanted to do this. It's like, we agreed to do this together. And then you just wanted to be shady about it. Like, took it. it. And yeah. Took it. Like, who does that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. like buying a house. Like we're gonna buy the house together, and then no, it's just your name on the deed. Whoa, Paul. Exactly. Like, yeah. Right. yeah, that's huge. Especially like all the time she spent, you know, getting him clean and mm -hmm. trusting him finally. Like you know, Mary later in twice. life, Third Mary, time three times. Yeah. <laughs> like really, three we've done times. this three times now, and you're still doing this. Really? Get it right, James. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, it took him a few tries to in that's decades. <laughs> Good mess. Decades. <laughs> 
decades, but you know, he figured it out. <laughs> he finally got it. He finally got it. Um, also, I, I'm sorry I'm jumping all over the place, but that okay. ending with Milo, when he finally said the line, I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm okay. out of here. <laughs> the end of the book oh, is you froze my... the face. Oh, no. Okay, I, I can still hear and see you guys. Let me see if I can... Oh no, Chelsea, what should I do to... I have no idea, homie. Good luck. Am I like... Oh no! Let me see. <laughs> but you're smiling, not frozen on... though, so it's still Oh good. gosh. <laughs> Usually I'm frozen on like, half-opened eyes. Um, is she frozen for you, Christina? I'm... She is. Okay. Yeah. I, I see myself that I'm frozen. <gasps> Am I back? Yes. You're back! Okay. Oh, okay. I, you know what I did? I literally just did this, like, four times. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. Okay, sorry. Sorry, um, I'll cut that out. I don't remember to actually cut it this time. <laughs> so bad. Did I even ask my question? I don't even know. Uh, oh, I was like, the ending line. oh my gosh. I was like, this boy better say that line. So were you always gonna have him say it or? <laughs> okay. From the very, the, that first, this, this, dra this book has changed drastically over many drafts, but that last chapter changed very little from the very first draft. He was, they was always going to end that way and he was always going to say that to her. Um, I, I, I literally <laughs> want fan art of him saying that line and then just casually oh! kissing while he's on the stage after his concert and she's <laughs> in like full like, oh. costume from her play and everybody's just like, oh my God, this Evie Jones and Milo and they're just casually making out at one of his concerts that are on tour. <laughs> That's what I want to see. <laughs> No, I, I, I love that scene so much. It's like, yeah, it's my favorite. It's like my favorite thing that I've ever written, actually. Um, and it's my favorite part of the book. And, you know, I don't like to, you know, I don't want to be like, oh, my God, my book's so amazing. Well, you know, I do think my book is good. It but is. Um, that's, <laughs> that scene particular, the last scene particularly, it sort of like haunts me because I'm like, will I ever write an ending that great oh, ever again? I, I don't know. <laughs> because it's so good, I don't know how to top it. So it was, I just said it was excellent. Time, like I maybe I won't write an ending as good as that again. But anyone who's watching this in the future, like first of all, go read the book, and second of all, mm -hmm. you will absolutely have all the feelings at the end of the book because it's an amazing ending, and it's probably oh. one of my top ten favorite endings. And yeah. it's amazing, Thank you. and I love it. And I let you not you yeah. guys can't see it because you know technology, but. This couch behind me, like I was literally, literally lying here, and I was like, frozen to it. I know. I know. And my dog was looking at me like, "What is she doing? Like, is she like, all are you right? okay?" And I was just feeling so hard, and all of my little teenage feelings, and I love it, and I'm gonna Aww. read it again because I I'm love so it. glad. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was so good. I was so happy. I just, I love that. Well, she finally talks to Mr. Gabriel's niece and that paid off. Yeah. yeah. I love that idea. And it's not the main role supporting. Sorry, I'm going to back up. What I really appreciated <laughs> leading up to that, I'm sorry, was that you showed that Evie's a good actress. Like we see moments where she's like, has to cry on cue. She gets through the bouncer. She like, she gets into mm -hmm. the gala, you know, like she has the chops. I think, I don't even know if she as the character is aware of it, but like she's showing that regardless of what people might think, like whether or not her legacy plays a part in it, she actually is good at what she loves. Mm -hmm. And so it was so cool to see at the very end, she gets to get on stage again. And that talent was always there and she didn't lose it. I was so afraid. I'm like, don't let this girl give up. <laughs> but it was just really cool to see how you drop those, you know, those nuggets of her skill. Like she has the chops. And so, I love how she's I not the most famous person. I love how nobody recognizes her when she's with Milo. And that's the only time she's And he's the most ice. famous, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's <laughs> the one. They're like, oh, you, you're the one. She's like, wait, yeah. what? Even when what she gets him? to the party, nobody realizes that it's her. It's Simone who outs yeah. her, like, every single time. And I yeah. love that. Like, oh, nobody cares about you. Oh, my God, it's Milo from, what is it? Oh, I can never Doves have pride. I want Doves a t-shirt. <laughs> yes, I want a t-shirt. I want the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, I, I just love that. I felt like that was such a nice touch. Like, and you really see that. Yeah. Like, for a lot of the book, she is way more self conscious than uh -huh. she, things really are. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, that happened month, months ago. Like, nobody cares anymore. Like, what? Yeah. 
And yeah. she's just like, oh my God, this is the biggest thing. It ended my career. I don't know what's happening. And the betrayal for her is a whole lot larger and personal. And he's just like, then the rest of the world, chill yeah. out, move on. You're not as famous as you think you are. Like, why do you have yeah, these guys? Right. Cut all your hair off. Nobody knows it's you anyway. Yeah. He's like, why are you yeah. wearing a wig? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love, I love he's it. So but he doesn't think he's being mean. Because he, he, he doesn't end up being mean, but he's just like, I don't get it. Like, <laughs> I don't love that about him. And this, really is, this is kind of dumb, but um, I've never been to I've never been to New York, but I've been to DC, and like riding the the subway is like a thing. Uh-huh. And I remember, like, I'm oh from, yeah, I'm from the South. We drive. We don't walk. We drive. We get. Oh <laughs> gosh. <laughs> You go to New York, you are walking. Before you know it, you walk like 30 miles. <laughs> yeah. So when we went to DC, we went to the subway and then um, they were like, do you have a Metro card? And I was just like, huh? Oh what? gosh, yeah. And so when Milo looks at her, he's like, how do you not know what a Metro card is? Like, what? why are you even here? And I'm like, <laughs> I felt that. Like I've had that conversation with people. And it's just like, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Just- yeah, I love I love writing that scene. I love all the scenes where she's like a fish out of water. I think I love yeah. those kinds of stories in general. But when he's like, when she's just like has to live among the masses and she's like, I don't know how this works. Right. You know, yeah. I really loved writing all those scenes where she had to rely on him to like mm-hmm. help her, you know. Yeah, it's so cool to see that because she was so self-sufficient back in LA. Like her parents are in Botswana. Mm-hmm. She just like got a whole house to herself with her friend that I want to choke. And then she goes, yeah, and then she goes to New York and she's like, oh my gosh. So I loved seeing that as well. Uh, I can like smell the subway. Pizza and pee, Chelsea. <laughs> so lovely. Yes. It's very accurate. <laughs> So can we talk about her parents for just a moment? Because like, I, first of all, I love how they're not like technically terrible parents. I, they remind me of another book that I read, but basically how they're just like, we love you, but we're also going to do our own thing. And it's not that we don't want you to know that we love you. Like we clearly do, but like also yeah. we're famous film film filmographers and you got to be here, but like still like this house yeah. don't pay for itself. We got stuff to do. And yeah, I I love that, but I also love how they trusted her and how like their trust is just shattered when they find out that not only did you like completely bomb your career, you did it while drinking from our beer from our liquor cabinet at our house yeah. where sure. we trusted you, and it's like you've never done that before. So then when she goes to uh, New York, they're like, no drinking, no partying, you better not. And they're calling because, nonstop. <laughs> yes, because they're like, oh, you must do this all the time, and they're I'm like, that's so parent like she did it one time and now her entire life they're like oh you've been doing this constantly haven't you yes they're like you're an alcoholic she's like oh my god (laughs) so dramatic yeah and then she doesn't even want to drink anymore even when she's going to these bars where they're playing at she doesn't even want to drink she doesn't even try even when there's a six pack at the party she's like "Mm, tap water tap water yeah (laughs) well she's like i've been burned before i can't i can burn again (gasps) oh my gosh speaking of the party Christina, Eli having and Eli and Chloe. Oh yeah! <laughs> I read that first, and I was like, Chelsea, you have a surprise on page two forty-seven. Let me know when you get there. <laughs> and I, I squeed. It. And I was like, Geek! and then I was, and I yeah. texted her, and I was like, she got it. She's like, it's her story. And I'm over here and I'm dancing. I'm like, she did it. Go Chloe. Yeah. Go Chloe. <laughs> I was so happy. I was so happy happy that I was able to work that into the book because Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted them to show up. But in the first draft, I could not find a place for it. Um, And then once I figured out, I guess, it, yeah, once I figured out that when they were talking about the logos, I was like, Eli, he made that logo. Like, I'm going to make Eli the one who made the logo. And then when they had this show, I was like, Chloe and Eli can come. Like, he's missing her in New York. Like, you know, they have to show up. And so, um, no, I really loved that moment, too. It was so cute. I was like, wait a second. She's a dancer. (laughs) Her name's Chloe. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. (laughs) I'm so glad. I'm so glad you think that hard. I'm so happy. And I loved how um, Candace had worked with Avery Johnson. So you were hinting that they might show up in the book at some point and it wasn't just like out of nowhere so I really love that but oh yes. okay thing that I remember that I have to tell you like right now and uh-huh. I hate that you can't see me 
but you will if you watch the video when it comes out. <laughs> Ma'am, I have to give you kudos for truly adding diversity into your book. Yes. Doing it effortlessly and yes. not beating us over the head as the reader because, yeah. um, like, okay, so I'm just gonna rant and sing your praises for a moment. So just let me. <laughs> First of all, I love, like, the case and I talk about this all the time is one of the things that we're really big on, especially, like, because written in melanin is a thing. One of the reasons is because I wanted to read books where the characters are just black. It's not something that you have to be beaten over the head with in every yeah. scene. They are just what we like to call casually black. They are black. They know they're black. The people they hang out yeah. with are black. That's cool. Yeah. You keep it. You know it. You accept it. You keep it moving. And I love that. And I also love how, you know, when you're representing the LGBTQ community, like I'm not personally a part of it, but the way mm -hmm. that you just add that representation in, and it's just casual. Like when Ben has a crush on Adrian and nobody's <laughs> yeah, making a big deal it. about it, it's just like, oh, I, I loved it. <laughs> you know, and then the same thing with Simone and her girlfriend. Like she just casually mentions that she has an on again, off again relationship with her girlfriend, whatever. And then like yeah, Candace but... has a whole ass wife. And that's just like, oh, and it's just mentioned in one line. Like, hey, her sister yep. comes up. She's like, hey, your wife is calling you. She needs to talk to you. Just tell her I'm taking a, an important phone call and I'll be with her in a minute. And that's yeah. it. That's the whole line. And I'm mm -hmm. like, and that's how it should be. It's just a thing. It's casual. It's not like, oh yeah. my God, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then talk like Ben talking to Evie and oh, the other girlfriend. Uh, Michelle. Michelle, thank you. You know, yeah. like they're talking about Adrian and it's just like they're just talking and like getting advice. And it was just like, this is what I want. I love seeing this. Like they're just kids being kids. It like they're all multiracial, multi ethnic. Um and that Vinny from different is... backgrounds. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean that she looked case. No, you're okay. And I was just going to, like, and I mean, like, even Milo coming, like, from the church and then, like, living in New York and he's dealing with that and, like, they're going to school and deciding whether or not they want to go to school. And, like, this is just, it just flowed so effortlessly. And it's nice to see that, like, because that's how our lives are, you know? I'm not sitting with my friends constantly talking about all the things that make us different. We're just, like, different and we're talking about what we love. So it was mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for saying that. And Definitely. I love Vinny and Michelle and the fact that they have yeah. been together since the seventh grade. And I love that <laughs> Vinny, also that Vinny is Asian, but the reason I say this is because I remember very vividly being in the seventh grade and I had a friend, her name was Adin, and she had been with her boyfriend since they were like in the third grade. And I- Oh my gosh. We graduated. Before you even know. And we went separate ways. And I saw her again after like my senior year of college we were on the the um the, the, what do you call it the freaking train at the at the college that takes you around to the different buildings i can't remember mm -hmm. we were on it and i was like Hadin? she's like chelsea and then she gets up and she's tiny she's all of like four three and she hugs me Aww. and i'm like oh my god how are you and she's like she's great and then she's like she's getting married to her boyfriend that she's been with since like the third grade and Girl, oh my god like, <laughs> wow love it and when i read about Vinny and michelle and how they're just like yeah we're together they've been together forever and they're probably going to be together forever because that's just yeah. how it goes <laughs> yep. Like, yep. yep i love it i love it so much so i did if you if you watch this video in the future <laughs> i remember that conversation <laughs> and it stuck with me and you're gonna love this book. it's great uh, <laughs> so that was my side rant. Sorry. But I say all that to say that you're an amazing, talented writer. Thank you so much for writing yeah. this book. It was an amazing read. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. And truly, I needed to read this book because yeah. I needed what I like to call like a refreshing of my palate for YA because mm -hmm. I just needed something that was fun and I was going to make me like, ah, that's so cute. Oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Yeah. I can't. Not, I can't. But I have to know what happens. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so so glad that you guys enjoyed it and yeah. like all the things, the themes and the characters and all of it spoke to you and that you were delighted to see Chloe and Eli, my OGs. <laughs> we were. And I was we happy were. that they were still together because I'm like, yes, they made it. I know, they made it. I, I imagine that Chloe and Eli will be together. Like they're gonna, I imagine, and I don't want to say. I know that most high school relationships don't work out, but I feel like you know they might. They'll have their hard times, but they might break up for a little bit. But I, they are like end game for each other. I always good. I think imagine being happy. I see them yeah. as being like literally Evelyn and James. <laughs> like, 
Like, oh, I, would I hope not. Yeah, so dramatic. <laughs> Right. Just like we're together, and we're happy, and then it's just like, oh, okay, and then we take a break, and then we come back together. Like, I don't know, I could see them being like that, but not as volatile, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, no, I could definitely, I definitely think that they probably spend some time apart. Like, if Chloe like traveled the world dancing, and you know, he was doing whatever his art thing is, but like, I just think that they really love each other, especially because they have like such like the, that childhood bond. Like they. Yeah. They know each other in ways that no one else will ever know them. Yeah. And so, um, I yeah, I imagine they would be together. I also imagine that um, Evie and Milo will stay together. I don't imagine yeah. that they will have issues. Like, I don't either. Issues. No, I think I that they, they're just going to rock out. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I think they're going to be yeah, she's gonna be actress. He's gonna do his music thing. They're like, they're gonna be like uh, Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. Oh, <laughs> and yes, that is a goal. Together <laughs> for decades, like yes. no drama. I just imagine them being really happy. Yeah, that's what I and want. Private. To They'll be very private. Definitely. Oh, yeah, well, she doesn't have any social media, so <laughs> right. She's like never gonna Instagram ever again. So. No. Oh gosh. Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay. We're still gushing, but we do, we're like coming up on an hour, so we have to wrap this up. But, um, so what's like, is there something coming down the pipeline? Is there next? Do we get a sequel for Evie and Milo, like with him on tour and her and her acting career? Or are we going to get something different, something new? Or like, what's in the brain? So I can't really talk about what's coming next. Okay. I'm not at liberty to do that at this moment, um, but I can tell you that it won't. They won't be sequel. It won't be a sequel to either okay. book. I'm kind okay. of sad. They might. I'm so knows the characters might show up That's other all places. That's all yeah. <laughs> Chloe, some and Eli. Like you might see. I don't. I don't know. Evie and Milo are kind of hard though because they're like famous. They're so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I will ever have them like talk like you might see them from afar someone might go to a oh, movie cool. that yeah. Yeah. Is, like people might recognize that like these are people who exist but I don't yeah. know if you'll ever like get close enough to them to um yeah I see what you're saying yeah yeah um but I can always guarantee that whatever I'm working on is romance <laughs> okay, good. We look forward to the next everything you do. <laughs> yeah, <I'll laughs> We've enjoyed it. Happy endings, so good. those are my things. Always romance. Always happy endings. Always black people. <laughs> good. You're here for it. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent on board. Three staples. So, All right. well, we love when it. You can talk about it. Feel free to let us know. And absolutely, you know, we we would love that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, um, let's cut it here. Let's wrap it up. Otherwise, we'll be here all night, and we can't do that. So <laughs> for those of you watching in the future, thank you for watching this video, for tuning in. If you liked it, please tap the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, do the same for the case because we love her, and she is amazing. And leave us something down in the comments. Did you read the book? Did you love the book? Did you read I Want to Be Where You Are? What about Now That I Found You? What about both? Do you want to read both? Like, what's on your mind? Tell us about it. One of us will get back to you. If you have nothing else to say, just leave a heart because we love those. And that is it, you guys. Thanks so much for watching, for tuning in. And until next time, we hope your days are lovely and your books are interesting. Bye.